that, that some of you this morning woke up saying, I wonder what's going on up there. Because down here, there's a lot of problems. Well, up there, if we want to find out what's going on, we ask Dr. Sky, and I did. <laughs> Welcome back to the Arizona Daily Mix. Thank you. And there's a lot going on. I mean, what is this conjunction? I always use that in gr grammar when I was writing something. Absolutely. The proper conjunction. What's happening up there? Well, first off, happy holidays to you and all the viewers. Thank you. We're seeing amazing conjunction, Pat, that's taking place all through December. It culminates on December 21st, and what it is in a nutshell. Both Jupiter, the largest planet of the solar system, and Saturn are converging in the southwestern sky. Now, that to most people might be, well, that happens all the time, right? Not quite. These two planets on December the 21st, Solstice Day, if you look in the evening sky in the southwest, will be literally a tenth of a degree apart. Now, that's only a fifth of the diameter, if you can visualize, of the full moon, which is so close. But how close is this? This hasn't happened since around 1223 and even into the 1300s. So for those of us out there, myself included, that always wonder about the magic of this beautiful Christmas star, at least from what we believe in the stories of the Bible and Christianity and other religions around the world, it more than likely was a conjunction. So now, at the end of 2020, this year of horrible COVID, we have some good reason to look in the sky. So simply look in the southwestern sky. You can do it now, just before the 21st, and follow that because you'll see these two planets converge. And on that night, Pat, They'll be so close in the sky that maybe to some people's eyes, they'll look like they'll convert. But there are some people who uh, follow the whole astrological chart Absolutely. and make plans for their day you bet. based on that and based on the energy and the attraction of planets. Yes. Does it make any difference to us on Earth that these two planets are that close? Not astronomically, but those that, of course, follow astrology, that's not my specialty, but I can tell you this much. There's great significance because people around the world are looking for some phenomenal thing in the sky, and all these messages that are coming to us from the stars, I simply think, as an observer and astronomer, that it's one of the most beautiful things that people can see. And in the telescope, if you take a look that night, this is even more of an amazing statement, you would actually see both planets in the same field of view of your telescope. So you're looking at Jupiter, which is now about 540 million miles from the Earth, and Saturn, almost a billion miles from the Earth, all visible in the same field of view, wow. totally spectacular. If you think that's something, and I think you should, when you hear what else is going on, there's a meteor shower happening. Pat, right around the mid part of the month, culminates, this is the Geminid meteor shower. It's best on the evening of the 13th into the morning of the 14th. But after that, you can still see the where do you look, northeast sky, after midnight. Meteors are coming from the zodiac constellation in the sky of Gemini, the twins. This is all debris from comets. And this particular object was an object that astronomers didn't really know if it was a true comet or an asteroid. They believe this comes from this rubble pile called 3200 Phaethon. It's an asteroid comet, maybe an extinct comet. And what's great about Geminids, if you look in the sky, they're usually brighter, slower meteors, a spectacular show. And guess what? The moon will not be out. So what better time could you look if you have clear skies when no moon is in the sky? Watch the Geminids. Hey, very quickly, can you tell me about this moonshot oh, yes. that China made yes. uh, successfully and they're on their way back? It's amazing. The Chinese have developed this most amazing platform called Chung'e. And this one is the Chung'e is the Chinese moon goddess. And this was Chung'e 5. What it did, Pat, it landed on the surface of the moon. It then scooped up material, about four and a half pounds of lunar soil, in an area of the moon that has younger rocks, about a billion and a half years old. It then launched off the moon. Six minutes later, it was in orbit. And then it docked successfully a few Saturdays ago with the orbiting spacecraft, and it's headed back to the Earth to make a parachute landing in Mongolia. But what's amazing is, Pat, this technology is just getting better and better on these robotic spacecraft. Say the name again. Chung E Five. It's okay, the fifth I one. I that and a side of fried rice the next time <laughs> yes. I go to a restaurant. Listen, Doctor Sky, you've done it again. Thank you. And so have they. Well, thank you, Pat, and happy holidays to you and the viewers. And to you, this is Pat McMahon, the Arizona. Daily Mix.